And so reasoning backward from there, probably about any tool that you're going to buy in a certain price range is all going to perform about the same way. And the real variable is whether or not you know how to use it. Welcome back, everybody. We are sitting in the shop here, uh, going to record our number eight podcast. And the topic is tools, in particular, tool technology, new tools, um, brands, and and more specifically, why none of that really seems to matter uh, that much to the essential craftsman. So clearly, everybody knows you love old tools. I love them. And I, I, I've never observed, aside from a skill saw, any actual noticeable affection or love or uh, uh, excitement about any new tool, even even really neat ones. You know, it's mm-hmm. they they still just doesn't seem to be anything um, that you got real excited about. Uh, why 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 do you think that is? Um. So I I haven't thought of that too much. I so. I think the tool, the tool among my friends and acquaintances growing up and as a young man that, uh, that triggered the most passionate loyalty were their pickups, right? I mean, guys will go to war over pickups, you know, Ford found on road dead and, and then the, you know, the put downs and the, and the self aggrandizing slogans. And so I, I, I was, my dad liked Chevys. And so I, when I, as a young man, I thought that, well, I guess I'm a Chevy man. And then at some juncture, I was in a Ford for a while. And I thought, wait a minute, wait, this Ford is all right. In fact, this Ford is pretty darn good. Mm-hmm. Works good, gets the work done. And it finally dawned on me first with automobiles that an automobile existed to get you from point A to point B. And if you wanted to get your identity tangled up with it, there was unlimited opportunities, you know, and, uh. But that just was never me. And I think that that sort of went to the tools, too, that my whole – now, I'm not always practical. I am, In fact, sometimes I can be kind of irrational about some, I think, things probably. But a tool is first a practical thing. And the reason I like old tools is because they're so elegant and so practical. Everything on old tools that was not – that was not going to increase its usability, decrease the burden on the man using it, um, is gone. That there's nothing on a, a, a broad axe you didn't need on that broad axe. Nothing, nothing at all. And a draw knife is the same way. There's nothing on a draw knife that doesn't help the man that's just working himself mm-hmm. to death with it. And so as an example, when Hitachi, I, I have long liked Hitachi nail guns. Until fairly recently on their do-it-yourself line first, they started putting these this green and black kind of a modern fantasy, these fantasy shapes started showing up in green and black on their tools, even their pro line tools. And it, I think that, I think that sort of pulled a trigger for me that it already, it cemented a trigger pull that had already happened that look, if all you can do to improve your tool is put some chrome on it, you haven't improved that tool. And so reasoning backward from there, Probably about any tool that you're going to buy in a certain price range is all going to perform about the same way, and the real variable is whether or not you know how to use it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these um, these tool manufacturers are in. You can see it at Home Depot or Lowe's or anywhere where they each get their, you know, 36 inch display case, yeah. and they are just doing everything they can think of to make theirs look better. I mean, you're going to go home with one of them, and they all have even their own little lights on them. And yeah showcasing them so um certainly the design and the aesthetic has been um factored in and to the to the designers of the marketing guys at what if yeah. some, is this is this going to make somebody buy it maybe maybe not um it's, it's like a, it's it like a factor it's like fishing lures and fishing tackle right fishing lures are not to trick are, are not to provoke a strike from a fish they're to provoke a purchase from a buyer mm-hmm. and the way fishing lures are displayed and the colors and the orientation I mean, yes, Rapalas do great on brown trout, and Meps Aglias are the way to kill brook trout out of little streams. Mm-hmm. But when it gets right down to it, what they're hoping to do is provoke the buyer to walk down the aisle and recognize what they want. And I think it's – now, today, I was at Garrettson's, and I was going in, and there was a late model truck, and it was a builder I didn't know. And in the back of his truck, he had those nifty Makita and Milwaukee 
parts boxes like yours. You've got oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are cool. Mm -hmm. That's an innovation. And that's, that's one thing. I haven't noticed Milwaukee right now kind of selling out to the appearance thing as much. Mm -hmm. Right next to it was a big old DeWalt compound miter saw. And boy, it looked like something you, it would take two men to lift it out of the back of the truck. So I thought, mm -hmm. huh, handsome saw, probably very accurate, but impractical for me because I'm too old to move it by myself. So, it, you know, it could be that it's simply that the Hitachi designer who put all the curves and um, and more round shapes, you know, space age ray gun design yeah, ray simply gun. didn't click for you because, for example, your your Porter cable cordless. Yeah. is all bionic looking yeah. and that that took every much as as a careful design and planning for that aesthetic as the Absolutely. curvy ray gun look but that one never jumped out at you as you know yeah. kind of gross yeah it's true and what happened was on the day that I bought it I was kind of in a hurry I had to have one on oh. the shelf and I like I have in the past liked Porter Cable yeah. and so there's a Porter Cable I'm going to grab it I see so let me tell you the disappointment with that thing is the case that it's in. The case that it's in is such a weak sister excuse for a case. It, the latch has failed right off the bat. It's falling mm -hmm. open. I've probably dropped the contents getting out of the truck. I will, uh, sorry, Porter Cable, you lost me, man. Mm -hmm. You could have spent a little less effort on the bionic ray gun look mm -hmm. and made that case about 10% better and I'd still be a loyal fan. <laughs> Yeah, I, all, the drills is where it really shows up because it's always it's already kind of a pistol configuration mm -hmm. and it's going to fit your hand in some way, shape, or form. And all of these manufacturers are just, they're designing and there's rubber padding here and yeah. angular things here. And it none of it actually really matters That's right. at all. Well, it, it just doesn't. It just doesn't. At the end of the day, I'm repeating myself, but you know, it's like hunting. It's like elk hunting. So Roosevelt elk are the elk around here and they're big and they're elusive and you've got to hit them hard to kill them. You know, you, you can't, and there's a, there's, there's raging controversies between hunters about whether it's a seven, seven mm or a 300 wind mag mm -hmm. or, or is a 30 out six enough and, you mm -hmm. know, leave your 270 at home and all this. Right. And at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is what gun do you have where you can place your shot? Yeah. If you can place your shot, you're going to kill that bull. And if you can't, it almost doesn't matter what you're shooting. And I think, you yeah. know, how is that any different from a saw or a drill or an impact driver. Um, another side of this uh, conversation is from the homeowner side, and I'm thinking of the Ryobi tools, which mm -hmm, is, mm -hmm. I don't think that's, uh, that's not a Home Depot brand, but that's where they sell them. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's owned by so the same company that owns a bunch of other ones. But yeah, uh, I mean, those, those tools, if those had been on any job site 15 years ago with the lithium ion batteries, yeah. would have destroyed the competition yeah. and would have changed contractors <laughs> perception of cordless yeah. tools and yet just by nature of knowing that that's the homeowner line it's yeah. easy to discount and feel like i would never yeah and but the fact is and i i worked with a guy who had a lot of them and they hit hard and do the job and right. like you said when you started out that's really all you needed to do and it's much more in the whatever the saying is it's it's the craftsman that well, how, what's that saying or the idiom about a well, it's not the, the tools that make the well one of the idioms about that is it is, it's a poor work a poor workman yeah, blames his tools That's, yeah, you know that. oh if i'd have had a better tool yeah if i'd have had a heavier uh, hammer if i'd have had yeah a sharper drill bit you know yeah and, and then the other side of it's true also that an insecure craftsman is going to make sure that he's sporting now wait I, I don't mean to put down people who have a uh a loyalty to a brand because it it's cool to have a lineup of tools that look like they came out of the same nest yeah. okay i like that and and i can i mean i get that nobody likes a rainbow herd at least i don't like a rainbow herd i yeah. like things to kind of look congruent but there's a certain security thing too where you know if you look good you are good well yeah, yeah maybe you know well certainly in cordless tools having batteries that are interchangeable and and um there's real value there, so there's yeah. no doubt about not about that. Yeah. Uh, on that note, it, I don't, I can't speak to golfing because I, I don't know anything about it, but I suspect that it's true that a, a, a pro golfer could pick up any mm -hmm. you know good set of clubs and and beat everybody else yep. who's not you know at his level. And I noticed this in um, when I was at school and on in Hawaii at, at BYU Hawaii, and there were 
It's a lot of surfing and these pros and everybody would pay attention to their surfboards down to the, the eighth of an inch of the width and, and how quickly the tail goes. And this, I mean, just real, real, uh, concern over the size mm -hmm. of their boards and even the pros, but same thing being said, uh, any pro or, and most of the guys out there could have hopped on any board from somebody's garage that's waterlogged and and a pro could have surfed it in a, in a way that's just next level yeah yeah it's just that's that's the point it is it really doesn't actually matter yeah. all that much it, it's that ten thousand hour rule yeah. right if you have time and grade if you have spent a long time doing it you're yeah. at, you're at another level that being said now now here we're gonna circle back but that being said when you get used to a tool and you spend a lot of hours holding one little differences can really show up yep. and and when you're using it for let's say 10,000 hours that little difference might translate to several hours yep. of saved labor and cost yep. and time so it it's it's not all just saying it doesn't matter it certainly for does for sure and and there's the whole discussion about a tool that is more well made will last longer and so your cost per hour using right. the tool goes down and that is true yeah. now for me and probably for most of the construction tools that people have they last long enough, and the amount of money that you are that you make when you're using it is not seriously affected by whether or not the tool lasts fifty percent longer or fifty percent shorter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a real impact on the money you make at the end of the year. And I've been thinking about that since I, we did that. You know, we introduced that skill saw, that new Mag seventy seven, yeah. which we're just about ready to review, right? I mean, it's yeah. had a few hard days now. Yeah. You know, and I haven't fully developed this, but people do not buy a Ferrari for the mileage. Yeah. Okay. And people don't buy, I, I don't know. And I'm out of my depth here, so I make this up, but I'm going to, I'm going to assert that people don't buy a Hummer, a maxed out Hummer because the maintenance is low. Mm -hmm. They buy the Hummer because darn it, they want the Hummer. They buy the Ferrari because they're looking to make a statement with the, with mm -hmm. the Ferrari and the cars that they run around the racetracks, you know, the Indy 500, they don't build those things anticipating that Boy, if it doesn't run for 20 years, I didn't get my money's worth. Yeah. And so there's a thing about a, professional using a tool he has to be able to pick it up and produce the right amount of work with no trouble for a, spe a specific length of time mm -hmm. and if the time comes that the tool's got to be replaced it just doesn't matter mm -hmm. as long as the tool did the job every day prior to when he had to throw it away right there's also the factor of if you're going to be using this tool and seen with it it does matter if you think it makes you look a certain way mm -hmm. like clothing clothing is an example like i'm gonna wear, i'm gonna buy a coat i just bought a new coat and i'm probably gonna wear it however many thousand hours till it wears out and so mm -hmm. it does matter to me what it looks like mm -hmm. and if i was a if i was a contractor it would matter to me if i showed up and rolled out on a job and had a whole set of ryobi tools and to, to right. say that like it doesn't matter it's it's actually just not true it does because if if i had to put my hands on them and look at them and charge them and mm -hmm. and let people borrow them for a minute and have my name like sharpied on it like it would matter to me if mm -hmm. that was a tool that I, I don't know, all, all of those things. So, so th there is competition in construction, you know, whether, whether you're competing with, I don't know, you know, eight or eight or 10 other laborers that work for the contractor you work for, mm -hmm. or whether you're competing with 50 guys that are applying for this, for the same HVAC installer job, or there is competition. And that's one of the ways that a mm -hmm. prospective employer evaluates an applicant mm -hmm. is how, how he looks and what his tools are like. Mm -hmm. Um, so true confession, when I was in Las Vegas and I had I'd gone to work, this is probably a separate discussion, but I went down there and after a period of time, I identified the outfit that I wanted to work for. And so I started banging on their door. Martin Harris Construction wanted to work for those guys. And finally, I wore out Pat Warren, who was a general superintendent, and he hired me just to be done with the annoyance. Mm -hmm. And sometime in the next three or four months, it came up that they needed a certified welder. And I said, well, I can weld. Are you certified? Uh, no, but I think I could be. So they sent me down to take the test and, and I passed the test, surprised me as much as anybody. And so now I'm the company's welder and that's great. But now I had to look like a welder. Mm -hmm. So I circled back by a welding supply and I bought one of those funny, mm -hmm. brightly patterned, silly looking welding caps. And I brought a, bought a, uh, rod holder that would dangle off my belt loop, just mm -hmm. like a real welder and bam, just with those markers. Mm going along with the certification that I had in my pocket, I was a welder. And the day before that, I was just one of the carpenters on the job, but you had to look the part in order to sort of run the bluff. 
Um, side note, is is the point of those little skull cap looking hats just to keep your hair from getting singed from slag popping off of it, or is there more to it than no, that? No, that's pretty much it. You can turn it around backwards and the bill puts a little shelf over your collar. And you can put your helmet, your hood on top of it. Boom. So, got yep. It. So that you don't get BBs rattling down the back yeah. of your neck and that yeah. sort of thing. Uh, that's really cool and a, and a great example. Okay. Now, moving on to the next point here. All that being said, um, wh- who is your preferred cordless tool brand of the big or let's say corded for, for that matter but is there is there a brand you feel loyalty to um i have been well you know i like porter cable real well for a long time in fact drag that drill out right there under your bench this is one of my all-time favorite tools porter cable i bought it 15 or 16 years ago before Porter yeah. Cable did before Porter Cable did whatever they did with ownership and stuff this is a great tool and so I just sort of got in the rut of mm-hmm. without question pick up a Porter Cable and yeah they've changed I think I'm going to I think I'm going to go back to where I started you know Makita came out with about the first 9.6 volt cordless drill I it, think it was the first like yeah, quite I think, literally I think it was and yeah. it revolutionized everything yeah. Yankee screwdrivers were gone and man, I loved them for a long time. And those yeah. that Makita set that you've had, and then yeah. we we duplicated that. I'm a fan. I really like it. Yeah, I do too. Uh, one of the things I love about Makita, that's what I was going to say. If I had if I had a gun to my head, I would probably say that would be my preferred one. I, they might be the only, or certainly one of the only tool companies that hasn't been scooped up in a big nest mm-hmm. conglomerate of other okay. tool companies. It is owned. Okay. It Makita stands on its own. Okay. And I think. Um, and I did. A, I looked on Wikipedia a couple minutes ago. Um, Hilti and maybe Fine are the only other really? two, at least from my like ten second search. Right. That alone is makes me almost root for them because it's no them competing not against all the other brands at Home Depot, but it's like one on three. It's like yeah. it's like them versus. So from a Make, competition standpoint, it makes me be like, oh man, nice job, Makita. You never, yeah. whoever owns the shareholders of that company, never voted to like sell out and get a big paycheck or however yeah. it would have worked. They're, they said, no, 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 we can uh, we can stand up to them. I think that's cool. So I've never considered thinking of Makita as an underdog. Okay, but you know maybe, and we love to root for underdogs. And besides that, yeah. I so I just bought for Kelly. A little bitty leaf blower. In fact, it was kind of a set for the yard. It's a it's a hedge trimmer, yeah, and a a little leaf blower, and there's something else. I don't even remember what it is right now, but man, they are slick. Yeah. I like them. I have no complaint. And I think if I if I was going to declare a brand loyalty for which I would go to bat and that I would begin to sort of unquestioningly throw down my money, it might be you yeah. know True Blue, maybe. Um, it's tough. Underdog may not be the right way to look at it. Maybe more like last man standing. Yeah. Because a lot of the other ones have been piled together. But but that brings another point. Just because some some company decided to add a you know a, a drill manufacturer to their family is not doesn't shouldn't disqualify them. And so it's it's really complicated. And obviously Makita still makes all their stuff in China and sure. Mexico and sure all sure. these other places. So it, like we started, it's it's there's a lot more just. Uh, um, like rooting for a sports team than than actual you yeah. know meat on the bone of this um yeah. of this point yeah 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 uh, now what, since we brought up the um Makita cordless um first of all Ave tore that drill down I didn't watch it yet or one like it he tore apart one old Makita and, and I think it's probably pretty neat I have to watch that but um cordless skill saws have not like you you've been skeptical and not excited to try that out did you feel that way about cordless drills when they showed up or no or and why not why 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 the difference there in uh you know initial sort of reaction um because 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 yankee screwdrivers were awful Mm -hmm. they were awful Uh, but they were way better than a than a manual screwdriver but man, it was just, it was like, are you kidding me? I can pull a trigger and run a screw in. But what about, I mean, this drill, corded drills, not cordless. R- right. Okay. So you're wondering well, why. Well, I'm thinking I'd... like a, a corded drill like this was probably on the market before yes. a, cord, uh, a battery powered drill. But they were somewhat less ergonomic. I, I mean, Milwaukee hole shooter was was right in there yeah. and, and three eighths drill motors were around, but they weren't as slick as they are now. Yeah. And and the magnetic holders and stuff hadn't got yeah. as ubiquitous and fully developed as they are now. And you so, know maybe it, maybe the fact that even screws because of all these reasons screws mm-hmm. weren't as 
involved in general construction the way they are today. So, and, and you didn't have the range of screw choices then. Yeah. You know, it's funny that that cordless drill motor changed screw manufacture mm -hmm. and, and, you know, pause drive and torques and all, and Robertson and Roberts, Robertson and yeah. all, square drive and all the rest. Um, if they didn't spring into existence, they at least came into my world mm -hmm. then. But I, I guess maybe the reason that I have been a holdout on the cordless skill saws, because I tried one or two of them when they, when they were early on, you know, in fact, I bought a set of Hitachi about the time they went over to the ray gun look mm -hmm. and there was a little, a little kind of a sidewinder saw in there. And I just, I wanted to throw it as far as I could throw it. Mm. Um, it, but that's because I spent so much time production framing where the saw had to have way more power at any given moment than you might mm -hmm. need in order to have the power that you actually ended up needing. Yeah. And, and so power was a big thing. And, and I just recently, we had a, we had a cordless, uh, Makita on the job. And I'm, you know, there's some things to say about that. It was a surprise in a, in a good direction. Yeah. Yeah. It's really neat. All of these, uh, tool technologies and developments, they just make it easier to get the work done and they make the work better. And most interestingly, the cost of all of them has come down so far to where yeah. now for a hundred dollars or $200, if you want to get the high end, you can have a, like I said, a, a cordless set an impact and a drill driver that would have just drop yeah. jaws, you yeah. know, on a job site in 1985. Yeah, it would have been a tool out of a flying saucer. If yeah. somebody would have found that, that would have been evidence of alien um, touchdown. To Although, like up. we said, if you ha if you could teleport one back, you wouldn't have much use for it because you wouldn't have the magnetic holders yeah. and all the screws. And if yeah. you tried to screw something together, somebody would probably slap you in the back of the head and say, yeah. don't use a screw, you idiot. Yeah, that that's would never right. Hold. <laughs> that's right. What are you putting a screw there for? <laughs> so there we go. All right, well... Um, if you guys had uh, any insights, put it in the comments on the YouTube side. This is um, still kind of a test drive for us, getting the hang of these podcast formats. If you have feedback, we'd love to hear it. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.